What about people who say, I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. Isn't that enough? And what I say to these people is that you're being too vague. You want to be seen as someone who is thinking more broadly about what's going on in the world. You don't want to say there is no God. You don't want to say there is no afterlife. You don't want to say there's nothing going on behind the scenes. So you, you at least get that much, but you don't go far enough because you're afraid. You're afraid to commit to something. So you settle on this vague spirituality. Oh, I think there's something out there. I think there's something after I die. And you don't want to intellectually nail yourself down to one thing. You don't want to think about the issue more deeply. That is really the crux of the issue here. You don't want to investigate the different arguments for and against a particular faith. Because if you do, logic dictates that you will settle on the one true faith, which is the Holy Catholic Church. It is the most reasonable faith. It is the most logical faith. Why? Because God put that desire for truth and logic and reason in us. And so when we see the religion, which corresponds to all of that, because it is the religion of the one true God, the Catholic church, then you will have a decision to make. You will either have to commit to that and say, okay, this makes the most sense out of all the data, out of all the experience that I have in the world. And so I have to become Catholic. And that's what many people have done. But for the people who want to sort of dip their toe outside of secularism and outside of atheism and say, oh yeah, I think there's something out there. I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. I often say to these people, well, do you, or, do you worship demons? Because that's spiritual. Um, there's a lot of immoral things that connect to spirituality. Are you all about that? Like what, what do you exactly mean that you're spiritual, but not religious? You just think that all paths lead to God. And so that's the first thing, the first topic, day one, that Aiken sort of covers here. So when people say that they are spiritual rather than religious, they frequently mean that, you know, they don't practice a specific religion. They recognize, however, there is more to the world than matter, that it has a spiritual direction. So I guess in a certain sense, it is good. They've taken a step outside of materialism and atheism. But God created us for more. He gave us the rational faculty. Faculty is sort of a power of a soul. You know, we have certain faculties or powers. We have free will as human beings. We have the intellect. So God wants us to understand. God does not want us to remain in the dark. He wants to not be hidden from us. Although in a certain sense, you know, I can't see God, I can't touch God, whatever, I can't hear God. You can reason your way to the existence of God, and you can reason your way into the Catholic Church as the one true religion founded by God, if you just think about it. Now, this might take years, and it might take a lot of conversations with a lot of knowledgeable and holy people. I'm not saying this happens overnight, but you can do it. You can do it. You can reason your way into the Catholic Church, but that's not the only avenue. There has to be not only a head conversion, but a heart conversion as well. So there's two things going on here. I mean, the, the Catholic Church, the faith, is not just an intellectual exercise. So from a Christian perspective, we can learn more. God loves us and wants us to know him, not just have feelings or guesses. So God gave us a specific path. He left evidence for us to figure out that he does exist and that the Holy Catholic Church is the means by which we get to God, following all the commandments and precepts of the church and living the life of the sacraments. Those are the means. That's the ladder, so to speak, by which we climb to get to heaven by the assistance of the saints and the sacraments and the grace of God and the assistance of the Holy Spirit. But he also leaves evidence in the human heart. Man has an openness to truth and beauty. He has a sense of moral goodness, right and wrong. He has a conscience. And he also has uh, the longing for infinite happiness. And he wants to be happy. I mean, Aristotle pointed this out 
way back in the day that man's ultimate goal is to be happy. Now, we have to define what that happiness is. But if we go with St. Augustine's definitions uh, of what happiness is and what it means to live a full human life of satisfaction, St. Augustine has a famous phrase. He says of God, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they rest in thee. And this is what I think is one of the most convincing ways to get someone into the church and into a relationship with Jesus is through not just the, the intellectual arguments, but the fact that this will make you ultimately happy and ultimately satisfied. Now, even an acceptance of the faith and a relationship with Jesus on earth, you're not going to be totally satisfied on earth because this is not your home. You have an ultimate destiny. You'll be totally satisfied when you reach beatitude, the internal embrace of God in heaven. That's what that is. That's what Augustine is ultimately talking about. But that can start here and now. You can start living as a citizen of the kingdom of God, even if you're not in the kingdom of God just yet. So our hearts are restless until they rest in God, or at least start a relationship with him. You'll never be satisfied with the things of this world. You'll never be satisfied with enough money, power, pleasure, whatever it is. All of those things will ultimately leave you wanting more. But if you want to start on this road of satisfaction and joy and happiness, start on the road that walks with Christ, because that's really the only way to do that.